interactive map. I recommended it to like three different visitors who came in oh, for yeah. hiking trails. I'm all go to this one, it'll show you. Well, it's definitely <laughs> a better way to get to the It's so uh, nice. for where the geocaches are so I was using your interactive map and then my geocache app and I'm like oh so along this trail we can find some stuff yeah yeah I never find anything my daughter's found like four so she's doing good yeah <laughs> Okay, we're going to call it a meeting to order at 202. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call, please. Committee member Fowler. Present. Committee member Pittman. Here. Committee member Reynolds. <clears throat> Committee member DeLong. Here. Committee member Thompson. Here. And is there a representative for Feather River Parks and Rec? Is that you? I'm sorry, what was the question? Um, it says here, FRRPD chairperson. That's me. Okay. Um, Thank you. <laughs> um, we're also going to call roll for advisory members. Uh, committee member C. Here. Uh, committee member B uh, Young. Here. Committee member Rother. Rothert. Committee member Standorf. Sorry if I'm butchering these. Um, committee member Rivers. I'm sorry. Committee member Grover. He is on Zoom. Um, and committee member Wright. That's it. Thank you. Uh, do we have any individuals who'd like to speak on non agenda items? Okay, moving forward to the consent calendar, I'm assuming everyone's had a chance to look at it. I'll entertain a motion to accept as presented. So moved. A 
All those in favor, say aye. Vote, aye. okay, there you go. Different format. <laughs> Motion carries with four yeses and one absent. Okay. Bob, do we have any presentations? Uh, actually, we don't have one scheduled. Uh, there is a update on the uh, trail, uh, but uh, Victoria is here if you representing the district if you'd like to ask any questions about the Brad Freeman Trail. Um, did you uh, actually I do have a question. Did you receive the information from Greg Melton? I'm still awaiting the finalized Virgin. project documents. Okay, from all right. Him. I'll I will send him an email today also. So we're working diligently and trying to get we did get a response from him. So essentially Would you come up to the podium please? Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll provide a brief update. There isn't too much to report on other than at the previous meeting, I had taken ownership of the project or I became the project manager, dove into all of the documents that we had received, or I should say the lack thereof that we had received from Mountain Design Group for this project. And I have just been working diligently with them to collect all of the accurate construction documents that we need to seek additional funding to complete this project. <clears throat> um, some of the other things that I've also done in the meantime is I've met with some local construction companies as well as representatives from state parks and the Calif California Conservation Corps. We actually did a site walk of the project and uh, you know there's a lot of overwhelming support for this project on many different levels and I think that there's a lot of opportunity there. However, we just don't have the correct documentation to move forward with additional funding opportunities right at this moment. We are working hard with Mountain Design Group to obtain those documents. They have confirmed that we will receive those documents. It's not for a lack of payment on, on the district's part as part of our contract. So we're working to get those and there are multiple grant opportunities that are available in the state right now that do align with this project. So we're hopeful that we'll be able to pursue those additional funds to complete it as a whole rather than try to approach this for, you know, just piecemealing it together. So that's where we're currently sitting with the project. But like I said, there's a overwhelming wave of support for it and it's not going on the back burner and we're just focusing on getting the accurate documents so that when we do pursue these opportunities, we have the best chance possible. Any questions? that this body might help you with in terms of uh, we've assisted grant writers before and if that is you, you may end up bringing it back to this body for an administrative something I'm just throwing it out there it's just an idea off the top of my head I mean it's, I think it's crucial crucial and critical to the success of that project so <laughs> I don't know if you have anybody maybe you have on staff I don't know we don't I mean staff um, staff usually handles most of our grant pursuits unless it's something more large scale or separately funded so we don't contract currently with anybody to do yeah. our grant writing um, it's usually the administrative team so myself included we have gotcha. applied which I've applied for many grants in my time I would really appreciate the support so I do think that if the city um, you know has any resources that they could potentially share with us um, obviously the district is in no position to spend any more mm -hmm. administrative fees whether it be through mm -hmm. the SBF or even our budget we don't have any additional funds allocated for this project when it comes to that so if we could work together mm -hmm. to share some resources yeah. that'd be great I know that the city is working on master planning for bedrock and the Feather River Trail Mm -hmm. in area right there on the levee so um, I think it would be great to get together and see how we can complement each other in all aspects of that area it just reminded me when <clears throat> and Bob you maybe can help with the memory but there was a lady that was helping us with our general recreation plan that was an expert in trails uh, I, um, and I, I can't recall her name I, we but should dig that name up because she was um, 
an expert in trails all over the nation, so oh, wow. it might be worthy to chat with her about that possibility. And we'll have to look it up because she was a participant I in will. the Recreation yeah. Master Plan. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how we, far uh, back was that? Okay. Are we going back ten years or more? It, it, it's it, quite a ways back. Uh, there is a, a grant writing uh, company that actually is in Durham, mm -hmm. uh, and I happen to sit on another. Uh, local board and we've actually engaged with uh, this company so I can uh, actually provide that information to you yeah. uh, Victoria uh, the other thing is that the city uh, writes a lot of grants and they do similar to the district they do them for the most part in-house mm -hmm. and uh, we have you know the city has excellent people on staff that could uh, maybe be somebody that could look at what you guys are putting together and make sure that it uh, has the right thrust to get uh, the I money. Just, Absolutely. <laughs> I just remember yeah. when we were talking about, I remember meeting with her in that room over here. Yeah. And I, for, I can't forget her name, but we need to find that person because she was an expert in trails all over the nation. So that might be very helpful. That's and it. I think another thing to keep in mind is that we're also open to grant opportunities that could potentially support other projects along the Feather River Trail, one of them being the um, bridge project that the mm -hmm. Rotary is right. spearheading right now. I know that funding is a really big challenge with that, and I sit on a committee with Bruce, and we mm -hmm. just spoke briefly on it, and I just told him, you know, I'm aware of this project, and yeah. we're actively seeking funding right now, and if there are opportunities of partnerships that we can come right. together and potentially do that, get them both done, yeah. I could see how that would be really beneficial for everybody. So obviously that's an important piece of looking at all these grants and understanding kind of the full scope of what we're doing down there. So, yeah. You almost need to use a word that you use the, the, uh, the trail bridge. Let's call it that. It's the trail bridge. <laughs> we'll rename it. it. Yeah, <laughs> rename it. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Any other updates? No, uh, mm -hmm. that's it. Okay, moving on to regular business, we have item four, the uh, 2023 NOFA discussion and direction. Okay, um, in your packets, uh, I did uh, prepare a staff report. I've uh, actually included some historical information. Um, I brought uh, show and tell. Uh, you might, some of you that were on the committee previously recall that the steering committee had funded the Feather River conceptual plan and it identified uh, uh, ideas and potential projects in the low flow channel of the Feather River, uh, trying to keep with the, uh, the theme of what the SPF should be doing. Um, the, uh, the different categories are something that the committee usually ends up deciding uh, if they uh, elect to offer ANOFA. Uh, I think I'll kind of jump ahead to the back and just throw the dollars out so you can be thinking of dollars as I continue. Uh, we currently have 147400 unencumbered, okay? Uh, $135,000 uh, coming from DWR hopefully soon. Uh, we will be, uh, uh, Eric, we've actually been waiting for the contract to come back for signature. And once we have the contract, uh, th uh, then we'll go ahead and build DWR. So in essence, you uh, will kind of use round figures. You have $282,000 uh, that uh, is in the SPF uh, bank account. Uh, there are administrative costs. And since my coming on board, uh, we've cut those costs immensely. Uh, and in my recommendation uh, for your uh, consideration and thought process is that you, if you do offer a NOFA or a series of NOFAs, that you at least hold back enough for five years of administrative fees at the current run level, um, which, having said all that, uh, takes you to about a little bit over $200,000 uh, that would be on and covered and available. The um, priority map, which the committee did approve in 2016, as I mentioned, deline delineated the various uh, uh, 
areas adjacent to the low flow channel, the Feather River, and they had uh, distinct considerations, uh, major consideration, moderate, and a low consideration, and that all becomes part of the ultimate approving process. The Appendix B of the Settlement Agreement uh, did provide, uh, optimistically, $61,270,000 uh, of funds, providing there was a 50-year license. There was uh, upfront money, and that upfront money with the funding of the 135,000 from DWR is all gone. We'll, there is no more upfront money under the current terms. Okay. Uh, I kind of mentioned about how the pro, how the uh, administrative things had been done. Uh, if you look at a pie chart of the administration and the projects, the administration cost over the period of time that the SBF has been in existence is, is not very large, okay? Uh, so the conversation that you need to have and, and questions that I'll be happy to answer if you have any is, you know, do you want to offer ANOFA? If you do, do you have a category or categories that you would like to keep the NOFA in? And then thirdly, uh, would we uh, would I just bring back that information at the January meeting, uh, which would be January 2023? We would then issue something um, and go forward. You can also have a special meeting prior to January uh, 2023, if you so desire, uh, to come up with your dollar amounts and with the categories. Or you can elect to do nothing, at, you know, and so that's that's kind of where we are. So, have at it. Ask me a thousand questions. No. <laughs> Discussion from the committee. Uh, so I understand, as you explain that, that if we, uh, at a point this is time, we could offer a NOFA for two hundred thousand, basically dollars, uh, for someone to create a bring a project to us to look at. Um, yeah, I think that uh, uh, committee member uh, Pittman. I think that the two hundred thousand is a top number, mm -hmm. uh, and that's uh, you know what is the comfort level of the SBF funding itself completely out of business if the FERC license continues to drag on. Uh, you know, we've we've kind of been on a long, bumpy yeah. road waiting for that to get approved, and in the interim. Uh, fortunately, the, the $4 million plus that was supposed to come at license signing was uh, provided ahead of the curve. Sure. And it kept the SPF up running and some projects uh, funded for the community. Shannon? The, uh... <clears throat> I can think of a number of spots right now. I, I don't know if we have to do a whole NOFA thing. I know this. Uh, committee can choose to do what it wants to, but there's a lot of things in our parks and stuff that need to be done. Is there a way to, uh, Mayor Reynolds last time talked about the trail, for instance, like the money should go towards the trail being built. Can this money go t towards bathrooms at Bedrock Park? Can this money go towards something in one of our other parks that needs? I know Bedrock's a city park and we're parks and rec, but it just seems with rebranding and everybody kind of wanting to get some momentum going, mm -hmm. um, we, we could do stuff with this money and for the community, you know, which was why I think it's there. Okay, so Instead of answer, letting it sit and then. Sure. Uh, to answer your question, uh, there is a procedural thing in the, uh, uh, for the SBF, uh, which pretty much dictates that you do need to offer a NOFA. Okay. You can do one-off projects, okay? And, but those are considered to be small. Uh, we did one, the committee did one recently, and the one-off was the uh, assisting the chamber with the funding for the uh, 2022 uh, fireworks show. So uh, to keep things transparent, uh, my, my recommendation to the committee would be that you always take the NOFA route. Uh, it, it delays it a little bit maybe, or perhaps, in the NOFA, it can say that you only want to do 
restrooms or retaining walls or uh, trail improvements. You, you can be very specific, but at least you've offered it to the community to come back with either their ideas or their application for funds and not just unilaterally made a decision to use the money for a different or a specific purpose. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Scott, no? you have anything to Did say? you have anything? Yeah. Um, my recommendation to this uh, committee would not for, to not to offer a no for right now, I think until uh, we have a better sense of what's gonna happen with the FERC relicensing. Um, if we were to do a NOFA, I, I wouldn't recommend anything over 100. I think it'd be nice if if we had a good sense of the license being uh, released and we had a very strong sense that that was gonna happen to do a NOFA pre, um, pre, pre that date or if the money was gonna be released, we can have some, you know, um, that going there as opposed to bleeding us dry and kind of coasting on no air until we hope that something happens. That's my recommendation. But as far as bathrooms, the city did buy some Portland news that are going to be installed pretty soon. We already, they're already here. Yeah, but as far as the... the No, the funding, none of that's an issue. The issue had been waiting on the engineering for the, to get them put in and engineer okay. them to the sep, or the sewer right. lines. That's all done now, and we should be seeing that going out to RFP and then to get those installed soon. It, it has taken an incredible amount of time just to get that done. So, And another potential thing, that uh, something I would be open to, is uh, we do have encumbered finances um, projects we know that are on their sheet here. But if there was uh, one of these projects that just needed a little more funds and we had that to get stuff done as opposed to starting another project and then you know, just having things that just aren't getting finished. Because um, I don't really think 200 or even 100 really is much nowadays to get much of anything. You know, an option you have too is you could put out just uh, don't put out a NOFA, just put out a call for ideas and yep. just have people, you know, say, hey, this is what, you know, we would like to do. This is how much it would cost. And then you consider because then you know the costs are in front of you and is that a worthwhile project? Uh, doesn't cost you anything. Don't commit yourself to anything. Um, you know, because my recommendation is to be conservative as uh, um, Committee Member Thompson is suggesting that we, you know, we have limited funds and. <clears throat> You know, I've been hearing the license is coming, um, yeah. and that's been, you know, for, you know, 20 years. I mean, so it's coming. I mean, we just don't know when. So, and there's nothing that I don't think we can do or any of our partners can do to expedite that process. It's just the process, unfortunately. Uh, so I would say be very conservative with the few dollars you have left. Sounds like a lot. It's not really a lot. Um, but also put out the idea for the, you know, the call for ideas. I mean, send us... Send us your projects with the cost, and yeah. then, then you guys decide. I'm, I mean, if you guys want to do that, I won't. I won't resist it, but I wouldn't even be really open to that. Um, I see it as a window shopping, and I, again, I think it just where we're at right now. My recommendation is just to, um, you know, with con with with a sense of basically we're. I don't see any more wind coming in behind us, minus a few dollars from DDBR. Um, just to make sure the projects we have currently on our books to see them completed, completed, uh, as opposed to potentially starting something else that yep. isn't going to have enough wind to finish. We're actually doing a, a pretty good job of winding down the projects that previously had been approved. Um, and I uh, would suspect, uh, or actually I believe that by the next meeting, the only two that will remain will be the lighting of the bridge of uh, the rotary project and Feather River Rex uh, Brad Freeman Trail. Yeah. Uh, those will be the only two that will be remaining. Everything else I've been chasing after and getting people to, to get them to finish it. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Veterans Memorial uh, <clears throat> finally funded about a week and a half ago. Uh, they were a little confused. They thought that they had to build the entire project before they would get the money and they were asking for another extension. 
and after meeting with them uh, and reviewing the contracts, uh, they, the approval from the SBF committee for the two grants were for pieces of things that were being done, and they had well exceeded that expenditure, like threefold. Uh, the Regional Fund Strategic Plan um, Bill and, and Chairman uh, Fowler has a provision for reaching out to the community and asking for ideas. So uh, I can research that a little further and have more information and provide that uh, to all of you. So I'd like to piggyback off what Committee Member Thompson said. Um, maybe we do have additional funding for projects that haven't been completed or having hardship for whatever reason. Um, also, um, Police Chief Legrone beat me to it. I like the idea of putting out, submitting ideas. Um, I can tell you from speaking with everybody here in this room probably that there are plenty of nice little projects that are right on the river that could use 25 grand, 50 grand to make a real dent. And yes, we have a limited amount of money left. I said before, I'd like to spend the money before, no offense, Bob, we spend it all on administrative fees. Let's do something with the money on the river or near the river. Um, recently, we did a, uh, a survey of the south end of Riverbend Park, south of the dog park, and the camps are back again. And I've been saying it for years, eight years, as a member of Feather River Parks and Rec. Um, we need to work on that back end of the property because it's secluded and everybody camps back there and it's costing everybody a lot of money to remove tonnage, tonnage of trash. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to have to have some earth moving. We're going to have to knock some trees down. That's not cheap. We can't do it. The city doesn't have personnel to do it. This is going to take some money or it's got to come from somewhere. Right. So it's just one idea, but that's going to be tens of thousands of dollars just to make a dent and it needs to happen sooner than later mm -hmm. so i would very much like to see like-minded interested projects that have immediate uh productive response on the river mm -hmm. period that's what i'd like to see from the bathhouse all the way down to the cement plant anywhere along that corridor i'd love to see it okay I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the, the Pittman. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I agree. In fact, I think it's a great idea to ask for a call of ideas. The only thing I would do in that letter is uh, ask for a call of ideas and kind of limit it to the parks and trails along the river so we don't have a wide opening, you know, ask for mm -hmm. money. Correct. And parks and trails would be a great idea because then we would have a close idea of what we could possibly fund and what we can't fund. And it'd be great for those agencies out there to uh, deliver that uh, list of ideas at once, and then it follows that we have a reasonable idea of what to fund in terms of a NOFA. So I like that idea alone. And whatever dollar amount that that's, you know, I don't even know if we should tell them in the dollar in the letter what the dollar amount we're talking about. Just say what are your uh, highest and best needs here in the immediate uh, future for your parks and trails along and attached to the river. Uh, would be the simplest thing, I think. And that, like you say, Ken, there's a lot of little projects that we have on a task list and we just don't have funded. And that might be a great way to enhance it. And, you know, we're all about providing the best in trails and parks. And we got this nice new little thing here from Eric, and we appreciate that. But it doesn't do any good if they run out there and see a big pile of crap on the road or the trail. So uh, that might be um, a good idea. And we just don't know what's out there. So I like that idea. I think that's the best way to go. You could get to your projects, too. I mean, an example that uh, Chairperson Fowler put out was working on the south end of Riverbend Park. You know, removal of trees and moving of dirt and things like that within the channel is probably going to require environmentals. And maybe what we do, they aren't cheap, but they aren't super expensive either. But we get those things done now so that they're shovel ready so that when the license yeah. does come through, right. we can hit those things. Yeah. Right. I will say and report that at the uh, Orville Dam oversight meeting on Friday, uh, that was one of the topics brought up is getting access to the river amongst all the different agencies that require permits and allowances and memorandums and those kind of things. Um, there was a discussion about seeing some way to shorten that process, but I doubt very seriously until the legislature comes up with 
uh, some kind of legislation that gives local jurisdictions the authority to clean and clear, uh, we're not going to have much success with that because every agency in the world is along the river between BLM, you know, everybody and everybody talks about it. So um, that was a discussion that occurred there, and there was some thought that the, the oversight committee could take a look at that and provide some direction to the legislature, but I'm not sure that's going to get too far. That's probably going to have to be initiated by the legislators to really bring forward because each one of us in the river, the city, Yuba City, Marysville, all, all the way down to Sutter, have difficulties with that problem. And I believe they, the two counties put some kind of memo together and they told us about it. And even that got um, kind of waylaid. They don't even have the ability to make that work. So I'm thinking that down the road, it may be something necessary from the state's level, but irregardless, we still have the local problem and the local problem we should be able to handle. Uh, hopefully, and that just have the funding to, you know, do whatever tree removal or, you know, whatever removal is necessary. Because uh, if there's a place to hide, they will find it. Well, it's very difficult to do anything uh, near the river. I mean, uh, Eric has been working with us on a project down there for regraveling, and I think it's been about I think it's been about what two years for the everything to get done. It's going to be right about that by the time they get ready for the regraveling. Because it's very, you know, I've learned a lot about, you know, what you can remove and what you can't remove and what may appear to be a weed to me is actually something you're not supposed to be weed eating and, you know, trees. It's a very uh, delicate balance of how you do these things. So, you know, they've been great partners to us. I mean, they're regraveling. They're going to you're going to see some modifications to the lagoon at Bedrock based upon this regraveling and the partnership that they offered us. So. I know it's very labor intensive and you'd be surprised how many people are involved in this. It's not just one or two that, you know, cause you would think, Hey, just drive a tractor down here, put some vegetable oil in it, you know, spread the gravel out, scoop up some rocks and dump them over here. No problem. Um, no, not even close. I mean, so, you know, and it's not that DWR has created this or any one agency. It's just a collection of all these things and all the necessary permits and uh, studies that are necessary to do that type of work. So, you know, see, uh, DWR has been a great partner to us in this, and without them, this project that we're working on down there that's taken two years to get to because of all, everything that's necessary wouldn't happen. I mean, because there's no way we can navigate as a city our way through this. So I think that, you know, as we're going to do these things down there, that we, you know, keep DWR close and tight with us because they can guide us through that process or at least to the right people. Yeah, just to comment a little bit. Yeah, it's a two-year process. You know, the, the salmon spawning gravel project being right, you know, in the in the channel itself requires the full gamut of permits. I mean, it's just the, the way it is for a project like that. So I'm glad we're you know we're we're doing this work over on the the left side of the river, which is going to increase some flow through that you know that uh, that lagoon there, and I think you know is going to help out the the park and. So, um, you know, we're, we're pleased to do that. Um, yeah, the, the main emphasis of the project is to benefit salmon in the river. It's, you know, to put spawning gravel in the river and, and uh, con do some contouring. And, uh, you know, we should see an immediate benefit like we have in the previous couple of times we've done a project like that. So we're really excited about it. But it's, uh, yeah, we're several hundred thousand dollars into planning and permitting right now. And, you know, so that, a, lot of, a lot of engineering design. I mean, there, there's, you know, hyd hydrologic studies and things we have to do to make sure we get the, the project just right for the fish. But So it's it's not just permitting, but, uh, yeah, it, it is a, a lengthy process. If you're outside the channel, you know, there's there's a lower, um, you know, permit burden than uh, being in the channel. So uh, just just keep that in mind. Um, you know, there's, you know, there's flood board permits, one that uh, kind of came along that we didn't expect. Um, so, uh, you know, it's just taken a little bit longer. But, uh, you know, I will say I, I, we are on track, though. We, we should be... Uh, good to go um the project windows next summer you know we need to do it in between the kind of the, the spawning run after the juvenile fish have migrated out but the uh we don't have a ton of adult fish back and they're not spawning yet so uh, we'll do that project during the summer of 2023 okay thank you eric any other comment <laughs> committee member thompson <laughs> thank you um <laughs> just out of curiosity you mentioned um victoria right and regarding the Brad Friedman Trail, are you guys fully funded? It looks like you're looking for other funding opportunities to finish it. For the Brad Friedman Trail itself. Right. So we've only Would utilized... you come back up, please? Oh, yeah, Thank you. Sorry. I just talked so loud. I'm not sure if I always forget to Just in case. Um, so right now, uh, the SBF committee awarded about 237 
thousand dollars for the project. Mm -hmm. We've spent around thirty thousand dollars on administrative fees when it comes to all of the construction drawings, all of the easement permits, all of the per, um, environmental permits, things like that. We've spent about thirty thousand dollars approximately. And so what we have left is, you know, a little over two hundred thousand dollars, but those estimates for the project were done under the assumption that California State Parks would be providing the labor and the materials at different rates. So now that State Parks isn't involved in the project in that capacity and we start looking at the opportunities to complete the project, and obviously that includes post and bid prevailing wage and obviously increased costs of materials from the original cost estimate that they did in 2018. Well, that's got to throw that completely away and start over. So um, I'm still waiting on the finalized updated project costs, but it looks like we're probably going to need another million dollars to complete the project as it stands. So right now we have about a quarter of a million dollars. And that's why we are exploring the, you know, potential grant opportunities that are available right now because, you know, there are some possibilities out there for us to obtain that. But it's yeah, we're going to have to make some really big strides in funding to complete this project, absolutely. So. Thank you. That was just what I wanted to know. Mm -hmm. Just in, in light of... Thank you, Victoria. I, I'm, and I'm totally in fine with putting a uh, notice of ideas available. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Do we, uh, I'm not sure what you'd call that. It, well, it, it has a funnier name. But, oh, great. Yeah. But just with that in mind, mm -hmm. you know, in regarding some of the funds we have available. All right, so Bob, I think uh, we have consensus as to what we'd like to do. Yeah. Do you have any? Yeah. I feel like questions? I have the direction to draft something for all of you to look would at. Would you please? Mm -hmm. Pardon me. I said, would you please? I will. Okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, unless you have something else, I believe uh, we have a report from state water contractors. Uh, nothing too exciting. Uh, just got to hop over to the hatchery before this meeting and got a tour from Eric. So it was the first time I got to see it since uh, the lockdown. So now that it's open, it was quite a sight to see and appreciate Eric uh, taking the time to walk me through that facility because that's great. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, nobody from American Rivers or are they online? Yeah. I don't see Aaron Wright here. Orville Chamber of Commerce. Amber. Mm -hmm. Just I'll do a quick report on Salmon Festival update. So we had just over 11,000 attendees, which is a pretty accurate estimate. We were able to work with a geofencing company to find out the exact number of people who were there that day. Mm. And we've gotten a ton of good response from both attendees and vendors. We even had some vendors saying they made more money on that day than they did in four days at the state fair. So. There was a couple behind the scene improvements, but overall, good report. And then in January, I'll do a full whole year report for you guys. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Mm -hmm. The SBF program specialist written report, Bob. Okay. Uh, actually, I it, I send that out uh, monthly. And if you have any questions on the report that was sent out last week, I didn't print a copy. Uh, uh, it's basically a recap of what we've talked about today. Right. Any discussion from anybody? Mm -mm. Okay. Agenda items for the next meeting? I think we touched on that. Yeah. Anything from the floor? The uh, swimming pool, yeah, okay, yeah. The, actually, it's fully funded and it was open and it had people swimming in it. So, <laughs> I'll add there was 130 the first day and I think it went to 140 the second day. I went out there and never, I was one of the people waiting in line. There was people waiting in line to get in that thing. It was it was nuts. I, you know, total success and. The constant delays of this project have been very challenging. 
Mm-hmm. And it was so important to our staff that we did everything that we could to mm-hmm. open the pool in some capacity for the yeah. community before obviously closing it down for the season. Mm-hmm. And we all pulled together, and it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. I mean, the community really enjoyed it. We received so much positive feedback. So Good. Um, we'll be back to share all those fun details with you guys at the next meeting. Well, and we also ought to share that the YMCA pool will probably be closed this winter, if not closed already. So, and I don't, I don't, I know you're not planning to be open in the winter time, but there won't be a pool, the warm water pool, the YMCA pool will be closed for maintenance issues and other problems. So. So that change is on our radar, and we are having those conversations with those aquatics instructors to okay. actually set up programming at that pool because it is heated, mm-hmm. and there is a need for year-round programming. Right. Our biggest challenge right now is staffing and keeping, mm-hmm. you know, right now it's the seasonal staffing for right. aquatics is difficult, but year-round um, is, we're, we're trying to work on a strategy for that. Is Nelson capable of being heated? It's heated, yeah. It's heated. Oh, is it? Yes. It's wow. Heated. And I can assure you we've had this discussion, so oh, good. Uh, oh, okay. that might be another use for funding, additional yeah. funding. So right. there's some options there. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else that anybody else like to bring? Just okay. In, in regards to that, yeah, the availability for the community, you know, having a pool that people could even do lap swimming. Mm-hmm. Of course. Mm-hmm. You know, I know some people that would like to do some lap swimming. You too? Yeah. yeah. Like early morning lap swim for people. Mm-hmm. Course, yes, yeah. please. Yeah. There you I go. Get rid of me. That's right. how you lost it, huh? It was. All right. Anything else from anybody? We will go ahead and adjourn at uh, two forty. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Cool.